Have you ever ordered something, got very excited for it to arrive, and then felt totally underwhelmed when you got to use it? No, I'm not talking about that pizza that you ordered eight months ago. Pizza! I'm talking about this, the brand new Apple Watch Series 7. Like many of you, I've watched so many videos that hyped it up and made me feel like it would be a game changer for me. But I've just sent it back to Apple, and here's why. But first, let's go somewhere more exciting because no one wants to look at the back of a makeshift office. slight change of plan I'm inside my car because it's absolutely chucking it down outside but that being said I would like to send my drone up and I got here and realized that I've actually sent my drone controller off to Holland to be repaired by DJI because uh, it's broken so uh, if you've seen some drone footage I've managed to get it fixed or I've just reused some old stuff but back to the Apple watch the first thing that I want to say is that you don't need an Apple watch there are very few people that need an Apple watch I don't need an Apple watch Probably if you're watching, you're unlikely to be in that category of someone who's older with medical conditions that physically needs an Apple Watch to check that their health is okay. Even then, the medical features aren't advised to be used in a medical setting. You must go to the hospital or the doctors to check yourself out. So they're a bit of a gimmick, but more on that later. The main thing for me is that Apple are very good at designing a product that you don't actually need, but they make you want it. And the Apple Watch is no different. But it's a little bit different to an iPhone. Everyone needs a phone in 2021. It's almost 2022. Most people have a mobile phone and the iPhone is obviously one of the most popular choices in the world. But an Apple Watch is more of an accessory for the iPhone rather than its own individual watch. It's meant to supplement things like an iPhone, an iPad, etc. I thought I would be in the target market to have an Apple Watch because I go to the gym and swim four times a week. I'm always using this in the pool. For the last two weeks, I've been using it in the pool and the gym. And to be honest, uh, I thought I would be benefiting massively from having an Apple Watch, but that wasn't the case. Obviously, being a videographer and an editor and producer, I sit at a desk 90% of my time. It's quite rare for me to be out of the house in my car, even if it is raining outside. It's quite rare for me not to be at a desk. The Apple Watch actually became a little irritating at points, and I'll get onto that shortly. One of the main things I want to talk about is notifications. Now on the Apple Watch, the notifications mirror your iPhone. You can go into the settings and customize which ones you want to be reminded about, etc, etc. I spent a long time going through and customizing it and choosing what I want. So I had my emails, I had messages, calls, that kind of thing. I kept it quite minimal. I didn't want notifications from Duolingo that I was about to lose my 900 and something day streak on my Apple Watch. I don't need that. Uh, but still, I found it a little bit irritating and eventually I turned off the emails. The thing with the notifications is that I got, if I was sat at my desk, I would have my PC running and I would get a notification on the PC, on Outlook, then I would get a notification on my phone, and then I would get a notification on my Apple Watch. I don't need three pings to let me know that I've got an email and it just became kind of tedious to have to sit through that and sometimes I would get a notification on the Apple Watch, it would buzz and ping and I wouldn't actually get anything on there. I wouldn't get a notification, I wouldn't get a prompt, I wouldn't be able to tap on it, there'll be nothing in the notification center. So it was a little bit gimmicky. Having said that, the Apple Watch is really convenient for things like calls and messages if I quickly want to reply to someone. So I can quickly just lift up my wrist, I'll take the call, answer it there, speak to someone. That was quite convenient. And I think that's a key word with the Apple Watch, convenience. When I say convenience, I mean a couple of things. The first thing is that this is meant to be convenient, so you can just look at your watch instead of looking at your phone. This saves you time, and that's probably the main selling point of this watch is to be convenient. If you've got an iPhone and you don't want to be bombarded and keep picking up your phone all the time, you can just look at your wrist, take calls, answer messages, etc. That's probably why many people buy the Apple Watch. But for me, it was a bit more annoying than it was convenient. Tell you what, it's absolutely freezing today. It's like two, three degrees out here. It's been chucking it down, it's horrible. I'm probably gonna get hypothermia. Speaking of which, let's talk about health and the health features on this Apple Watch Series 7. I think the health features are great. They're a little bit gimmicky and they're probably suitable for older people like we mentioned earlier, but not myself like a 22 year old. Obviously you've got the ECG app, 
the blood oxygen app, and those things are really good barometers of your health. Apple always advise if you think you've got a problem, go straight to the hospital, speak to your doctor, don't use your Apple Watch as your diagnosis for different diseases, heart disease, heart attacks, etc. The things like the heart rate counter are quite interesting to see during a workout. When you're doing your workout, you can see your BPM, how many calories you've burned, this kind of thing. But I did expect a little bit more functionality within the workout app itself. It is a little bit tin pot is the way I would describe it because you get all this data, but what are you meant to do with it? You get calories burnt, you get your heart rate and how long you've been exercising. That's literally about it. And it's also very similar to the sleep app. I've been using this to track my sleep the last week. And what you're meant to do with that data, you can see your respiratory rate throughout the evening. You can see your heart rate and that's it. I don't think you're actually meant to do anything with this data. You're meant to just look at it and then take what you want from it. I'm not really sure it has any value. So I probably wouldn't advise sleep tracking to be the main reason you buy an Apple Watch. <sighs> I think I'm going to get back in the car now because it's bloody cold. done that in a long time where I've gone out in horrible conditions like that it's really horrible in the UK it's like three degrees right now in conditions like that you'd normally expect the battery on something like an Apple watch to completely deplete but it was absolutely fine that brings me neatly on to the topic of battery life now in a small device like an Apple watch you wouldn't expect battery life to be great but they still advertise 18 hours I consistently got it throughout a day including sleep tracking well over 24 hours uh, but I was only using it light for things like calls texts um, occasional ECG if I wanted to have a play around with that and also uh, fitness tracking in the evening, workouts, swimming, etc. I also do sleep tracking throughout the evening. It was usually fine in the morning, I'd have well over 20% of battery left. I think you'd also expect a little bit more from a 400 pound device. But obviously they're on the limitations of what they can put into a watch anyway. Something this small, you can't put a huge battery in it without it being clunky or weighty. Having said that, it does drain iPhone battery quite a lot. I noticed this straight away. Normally in the morning, I'd have about an hour and a half of screen on time. I'd be down to about 90% on my iPhone iPhone 12 Pro but with the Apple Watch connected I was down to about 77 normally 75% after an hour and a half of screen on time on my iPhone. I have turned off most notifications I've gone through customized it and tried to make it as battery efficient as possible without limiting so many features but it was still draining my iPhone battery which was a great shame. One thing that I did have to delete is the Now Playing app. I found this quite irritating and it was actually draining battery quite a lot. I could see in the settings as well. Whenever I've plugged my phone into the car, I'd have the Apple Music on my phone and also I'd have the prompt on my watch to then tap and change what song was playing or to pause it or to skip. But there wasn't really much functionality in this. I couldn't skim between songs. I couldn't find an exact part of the song with a slider or anything. Maybe I'm missing something, but I couldn't do that on my Apple Watch. Um, I just thought it was a bit gimmicky because when you're driving you want to focus on driving you don't want to focus on your phone or your watch and that's also wasting precious battery life by lighting up the entire car. This was also the case if I was watching YouTube or something on my phone and listening to it through an external speaker like a Sonos I'd have the prompt on my watch to see and it would literally just tell me that I'm listening to something through my iPhone to a different speaker. I don't need to know that, no one needs to know that. You already know it because you're doing it. You're listening to it through another speaker on your phone. For me, this was quite annoying and it drained battery life. I think overall this Apple Watch is gonna be great for a lot of people, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a bad device. It's just not right for me. I didn't find like it was 400 pounds worth of value. It didn't add anything to my life. And the real deal breaker for me was at no point during these couple of weeks of testing, whether I was working out or I was at home here sat doing editing, at no point did I think, wow, I'd be screwed without this Apple Watch. I never thought that. And for me, that was a kind of deal breaker and the final straw where I thought, okay, I don't actually need this. And this money would be better invested in something like my MacBook Pro, which is coming in a couple of weeks, which is absolutely gonna change my creative world. If you watched one of my recent videos about what I learned in the pandemic, I talked about how I started making music and I was using my old MacBook Pro 2015 base model, which is on its very last legs, hence why I've upgraded. And you can see it here. Um, I'm not using this anymore for editing. This got absolutely used so much uh, when I was doing uh, the documentary for Racer, when I was traveling to Mexico. This was like, my main workhorse. I didn't have a PC, but now I have a PC. My MacBook just supplements it. 
And what I'm saying is this is a great device for many people. It just didn't work out for me. I think it needs an extra headline feature because from the Series 6, the only thing that changed was the display and the faster charging. That's about it. No one wants to buy the same watch year on year. Nobody wants to buy a watch that isn't that good. This is a good watch, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't good for me, hence why I'm sending it back to Apple. I didn't know what to expect in terms of what you can put into a smartwatch because this was my first ever smartwatch. I've seen my friends, family, and neighbors have uh, similar watches, either an Apple Watch or a Garmin. And I thought this would really change my world in terms of fitness tracking and all the health features but it really didn't. Finally, I think this is just another device to add to your Apple ecosystem. You might have an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac. The watch might just be an accessory that you buy, and it is an accessory, that's important to know. It's not a standalone product like something like a Garmin might be. Maybe you've just bought an Apple Watch Series 7, maybe you've got an older Apple Watch and you'll consider upgrading. But if you've already got one, this will be a great upgrade for you, no doubt about that. But for me, as my first smartwatch, I'm not really sure if I'm a watch guy. That might be why I sent back the Apple Watch Series 7. If you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments down below. If you disagree with anything I've said, please do correct me if I've made any errors and let me know what you think of the video. And I'll see you next time because I'm back with consistent uploads until the end of the year. Thanks for watching, take care and ciao.